How many of you play Rumble? I heard it's nothing but sweats and it's a scary playlist. A lot of tryhards there. It's a playlist full of nine hungers, hand cannons, stompy hunters, warlocks with Dawn Blade, everything, you name it. It is the worst playlist in the game. Some of you out there feel like this when it comes to the Rumble playlist. To you, the Rumble playlist is tryhard central. To others, it's a test of skill. A playlist that lets players gauge their progress and see what necessary steps are needed to continue their progression to a higher skill level. Well, today, we're going to be talking about the best tips for winning more games in Rumble. With this guide, you will be getting called a sweaty tryhard by the end of the video. I promise you that. Promise. But before we get any further into the Rumble breakdown, if you want to support the channel, you can do so by watching the entire video and sharing it with your sweaty friends. Both are free ways to support the channel. And if you enjoyed the video, shoot, click the subscribe button and turn on all bell notifications. With that out of the way, grab your sister's lady speed stick and get your most try hard loadout. And let's do this. Now, to start this video off, we need to understand what Rumble is. Rumble is a free for all playlist. It is a game mode in which first to reach 20 kills wins the match. And like Shaq says, You against the world, Guardian. Let me begin by getting one of the biggest misconceptions out of the way. Players tend to see the kill leader at the top of the screen and think that is their main target. Stop. In Rumble, your target is everyone. If you happen to find the kill leader, then that's good. But for the most part, stop trying to find the kill leader to kill. This is something that was in Destiny 1 when Rumble was a point system and killing the kill leader would grant you extra points. But in Destiny 2 Rumble, it is a kill point system. Each kill is worth one point. Now let's get into tip number one, which is kill speed versus kill leader. Your main goal in Rumble is to get kills as quickly as possible. This is why having the most effective loadout will boost your chances to win. This is why bonus damage perks are perfect for this game mode because securing a kill will boost your damage output for the next kill. If you remember anything from this section, remember that it's all about speed. Being quick to kill is your agenda, which is why I want to get this point across in Rumble. Your KD doesn't matter. Your KD can be worse than everybody's on there, but as long as you reach 20 kills first, you won. In Rumble, your KD isn't the driving force, but something you want to keep in mind. Even though your KD isn't much of a factor in Rumble, when you are dead, you are out of the game for a short bit. You need to spawn and get back into the fight, which ultimately delays you from getting kills. The more you're out of the game, your competition, the kill leader, will be getting kills while you watch from the death screen. Nobody wants that, right? This is why when you happen to kill the team leader or when the kill leader dies, that right there is great for you because it's giving you the advantage to catch up. It is taking them out of the game for a short bit. Closing out this section, staying alive is a must, but don't let that hinder you from trying to secure more kills. In Rumble, the aggressor can build momentum and steamroll an entire lobby. Continuing, in a Rumble match, your goal is to get into engagements as quickly as possible. This can be done with tip number two, which is zoning and remembering spawn locations. In Rumble, you need to start remembering spawn locations. The main reason for this is to assist you in shortening the time between engagements. Since players are constantly dying in Rumble, they are spawning up in any available spawns. Once you start remembering spawns, if you can start spawn predicting, you now can do what I call zoning. Zoning is great for those players looking to divide the map into smaller quadrants in which you can bounce between two spawn locations, shortening the time between fights. With zoning, you can always use the layout to your advantage. If that be using specific cover, concealment, or attacking an enemy from an unexpected location. This is why zoning and remembering spawn locations is great because the last thing you want to do is start traversing around the map looking for your next target to kill and you find yourself being spawn killed and being hunted by someone zoning you. As you can tell on screen, I am bouncing between a couple spawns here. This is between two to three spawns. This little location right here, I just split this into a quadrant. As you can tell, people can spawn up here and I can just bounce between these spawns, getting kills on different people who spawn in rather than me moving around the map looking for kills and ultimately getting spawn kills or trapped in a zone by someone else. Now that you're zoning your enemies, and engaging them right when they spawn in, the next tip is going to help you keep this pinball momentum going. 
in order to keep the momentum going when you're moving from gunfight to gunfight you need to remember the shark analogy when you get into an engagement the gunfire sounds will attract enemies this is like a shark smelling blood in the water once they hear those hand cannon shots or those auto rifle shots they're going to start making their way to your position this is why you need tip number three which is cover when it comes to rumble you don't have anyone watching your back so you need to cover your own six the best way to do this is having your back towards cover and when you engage enemies you need to be near cover this is going to allow you to use cover as a way to allow yourself ample time to recover from the previous engagement while utilizing cover as soon as you get a kill you need to recognize where your next threat is coming from that can be done by looking at your radar and using cover to extend the time before the next engagement by doing so this will allow you to recover on the topic of recovery this brings us into the second part of the category recovery the recovery stat is one of the most important stats when it comes to the crucible especially in the rumble playlist when you're moving from gunfight to gunfight you don't have time to wait on the sidelines to recover because if you are on the sidelines someone is out there getting kills and getting the 20 kills before you now i'm not going to tell you what recovery stat you need in rumble i personally keep my recovery stat between 9 and 10 which brings my recovery to a solid 46 to 41 milliseconds but I think to be on the safe side, somewhere between a 7 and 10 would be a great base and you can adjust from there. Closing out this section, remember that cover is going to keep you alive and stop someone trying to clean you up. But it also allows you the time to recover. It allows you ample time to recover safely without anyone dealing damage to you so you can get back into the fight. Now that we have a solid amount of basics out of the way, how do we begin putting these tips into play? This brings us into tip number four, which is all focused on your radar and how you should be using your radar to help you move around the map and succeed in rumble. Say you spawned into a rumble match. What's the first thing you do? Hide in the corner and wait for heavy ammo to spawn in? I hope not when you spawn in there's a high probability and i mean high probability that you spawn next to an enemy shoot you might be in between two enemies so when you move from your initial spawn point you need to make the best decision because if you engage the wrong enemy you will be exposed and the shark effect we just talked about will take effect so when you spawn in start trying to zone the initial location like we mentioned earlier in this video zoning a location is great you can do this when you initially spawn once you see red on the radar, slowly start making your way there. But at the same time, you want to keep an eye on your radar so someone doesn't trail you and try to clean up you and your target. If you notice someone trailing you, try to find cover and engage them. For starters, this is a great way to throw them off. They won't expect you to engage them since their radar pinged you moving away. If you catch yourself in the middle of two gunfights, remember cover is going to be your best friend. Use cover and your radar to safely maneuver around and turn that 1v1v1 into engagements that cater towards you. Your radar can give you a solid idea on how your enemies are approaching you. Using your radar can save you from getting pinched between two targets. So remember, when you spawn in, zone your area and use your radar to engage the next enemy. We've established majority of the key points, so let's get back into the most effective method of securing kills. This can be done with tip number five, use your tools. Each class, regardless of subclass, have a specific tool belt. This is what you need to use to give you the best chance of securing kills effectively. In Destiny 1 and Destiny 2, a tactic used by top tier players is to begin each engagement with a grenade. This is something that you should be doing as much as possible in Rumble. Let me show you this example here. The reason behind this tactic is to lower the amount of time you spend in that current engagement. Look at this. If I see a target and I prime them with my arc bolt, I not only cause them damage, there is a chance I can come out of this engagement without taking any damage since I only have to clean this enemy up. This is a huge advantage for moving target to target. If I easily clean up my initial target, my first enemy, and I take minimal damage, the next enemy not only has to deal with my kill clip weapon, but I could potentially have more health than I would have if I didn't prime my target. If I can't find cover, then I need to kill my enemy in front of me as quickly as possible. Because if I don't and I take a lot of damage, I'm going to be cleaned up very easily. But if I prime my target with a grenade, with a throwing knife, with a smoke bomb, with a celestial fire, I already started damage before I even began that engagement. Grenades are great for doing that. You can prime them with a grenade. You will already cause damage without exposing yourself. By not exposing yourself, you won't take damage. So the next target, you'll have more health for that engagement. In Rumble, heavy ammo can cause you to lose, especially if your enemy is using the heavy ammo to secure more heavy ammo, which is why we're getting into tip number six. Heavy ammo can make or break any Rumble match. Now, I want to start this section off with this. Heavy ammo spawns in the same location on every map. 
once you jump into a rumble playlist you need to start remembering each heavy ammo spawn location once you understand and pinpoint the location you can now enforce tip number two which is spawn trapping your enemies and zoning off the heavy ammo location now it's your choice if you want to use the heavy ammo to win the match but if you decide not to please do me a favor and just pick it up and don't hold it this will result in your enemy acquiring heavy ammo once you've been defeated one thing i like to do and it's a dirty tactic guys and i mean real dirty tactic is to bait the power ammo a lot of players tend to see that little purple icon on the map and they start gravitating to it like a fly flying to a bug zapper 100 focus on that purple icon if you're utilizing tip number two and zoning that location this is a great way to have your enemies go towards that location and you just picking them off easily it is great to lure people in that way so you're not out there running around and trying to find kills you know to ultimately win just be very cautious because if you are utilizing the power ammo as a way to bait enemies towards that location be careful because if you die again you give up the power ammo and you just ultimately lost because someone can just steamroll the entire lobby with it on that note the footage you're seeing in the background I was down a couple kills. I was about to lose to the kill leader. So I ended up picking up power ammo and I utilized that to come back at the very end. I ended up utilizing the power ammo, the heavy ammo on the kill leader. I killed him, which again, tip number one, we delayed him. Every time he would die, it would delay him from getting a kill. And it gave me the opportunity to bring the round back. This is why I say power ammo is crucial. Secure it, use it, get rid of it. Whatever it is, don't let anyone else get it because this can happen to you. Moving on, using supers in Rumble is a bit tricky. Players tend to bring a 3v3, 6v6 mindset into the Rumble, which isn't something you want to do. In this category, I'm only going to provide you with one tip. Don't blow your super. Now, I know someone is typing in the comment section. Don't blow your super? Come on, man. That's an easy one. Obvious one. You call yourself a Rumble sweat? Come on, man. I expected better. You laugh, but someone is actually typing that right now. But there is more to it than don't blow your super. Remember, I said players tend to bring a 3v3, 6v6 habit in the rubble. Well, they do. They activate their supers without regard and forget that unlike 3v3, there are a total of five blueberries who want to use their super against your super. So my main advice, if you were slaying out and you were in first place, as soon as you get your super, you need to use it. You need to use it at first chance so you can secure a good double or triple kill. There are a few reasons behind this. Number one, no one will have a super to shut you down if you were first nobody has had ample time to get a super just like you use it number two you now have a good chance of getting another super by the end of the match which if you get a super towards the end of the game that'll help you secure the win or come back if you're losing the lead a tad bit the reason i bring these up is because i see a lot of players hold their super and wait for the stars to align to use it just stop stop it right there guys this is a really bad habit even if you have a shutdown super like a Nova Bomb, at least find two enemies that aren't paying attention and just use your Nova Bomb. What's causing you to lose the match? Sitting on your super for too long. Remember, use it first, get it back first. But what if you aren't the first to get your super? Maybe someone else got their super first. Maybe you're third place and you get your super. Play as if everyone has a shutdown super. If I have an Arc Strider and I'm chasing the Titan, I'm going to be ready to dodge at any moment. Why? Because if he activates his slam, he will shut me down. I lost my super and my opportunity to get easy kills. One major point I want to get across is stop activating your super when you're almost dead. If you are in the red, do not pop your Dawn Blade. Don't pop your Arc Strider. Don't pop your Storm. Don't pop any super when you're in the red like that. Because there is a chance someone's going to clean you up and you lost your opportunity to secure a couple kills. At the end of the day, you want to use your super to secure two to three kills at most when it comes to Rumble. That right there was a good pop. A good activation of a super is when you secure two to three kills. If you can go more, all the better. But if you can only secure two kills, fine. Get two kills, move on, get your super back faster. Remember that you might not be able to win every rumble match. But with these tips, your chances are greatly increased. For those who actively avoid the rumble playlist, you shouldn't. It's a great spot to boost your game awareness and hone your multi-engagement skill. One thing I would recommend for anyone still struggling is to check out my how to raise your KD video. In that video, I talk about some of the best tips that will help you win more engagements and overall boost your KD. If you are a fan of this video, that video will be right up your alley. Also, if anyone is trying to improve, I made a vi video specifically focused around improving in Destiny, where I break down some of the best FPS tips used by professional gamers. Both videos are on screen now if you're interested. 
with that thank you so much for watching and making it to the end of the video if you did let me know down in the comment section be like brave i made it to the end of the video if you haven't followed me on twitch instagram or twitter all my links are down below with that don't forget to hit that subscribe button click that bell for those notifications and have yourself a good day